How's it going everybody? My name is Francesco with the CSU Entertainment Alliance and today we are here at the very first BIPOC Film Festival here in San Francisco. So we're going to go ahead and go inside, see who we can talk to and uh, have some fun. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Daniel Tinheiro again, student director. Now with a haircut. Hey, a fresh fade. Okay, okay. So, hey man, let me just get let me just get your thoughts on the evening. How do you, how do you feel the the evening went? It was uh, better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of people. Uh, movies were phenomenal. Uh, Which was your favorite? Ooh, I'm gonna hurt feelings. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'll get to it. Uh, okay, so my favorite has to be damn. It's because I have like three favorites. I mean, they're all great. Yeah, yeah. But I kept telling my girlfriend, "This is my favorite. This is my favorite." Uh, I know the same. Same. <laughs> they were like, I, I think, I think I'm gonna give it to the Arab story. Oh yeah, that was that, fun. that was kind of funny. That was fun, uh, man. Yeah. Super deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all killed, 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 yeah, killed it. Y'all killed it. Y'all killed it. Hey, if you see this, you killed it. I got, I got some questions for you, bro. Okay. First of all, how do you feel right now, man? Like, I, w I talked to you when you were in the process, the beginning process of this. A lot of things have changed. I feel like there's a weight off your shoulders. You still. Has it settled in that it's over, all that stuff? I'm still, like, not there yet. <laughs> I still feel like I'm trying to get more people in <laughs> when the event's over. So still promoting. It hasn't synced in. It hasn't yeah. synced in, you know what I mean? Hey, so hey, September 28th, uh, cutoff date is 2 o'clock. <laughs> 2 o'clock. Make sure to get your ticket. Nah. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, no, it, it, I, I can't grasp it because I'm still working, you know? I'm, I'm over here doing sound and stuff for people. Oh, so God. it's like, I'm not really fully enjoying my event, but I am at the same time. Right now is, yeah. right now is the time. I, I don't know if you guys know, but we are in the after party and we're uh, networking now. So yeah. this, is, this is their time to shine and kind of link with the other producers, directors, and whatnot. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, or just, you know, have fun. As enjoy, you know, talk like we are right now with the movies yeah. and stuff. So yeah. it's. I think this is a, this is when I'm gonna settle in and actually enjoy it. You know? For sure. So yeah, please do. You said today was was different in some ways. I was wondering what's one way that this matched exactly what you're hoping for this night to be, and then what's one way that it went differently. Okay, so I guess originally before like uh, my festival director came in, I was originally thinking like uh, small but small venue. You know, uh, probably in the Coppola Theater. You know, um, have whoever we know do us favors and stuff. And then, you know, Dolby came into the picture, Someone was Loud came into the picture, you know, various other nonprofits came into the picture um, and just helped us out. You know, um, I was hearing that we were able to raise up to $20,000 thanks to our festival director. Congrats, you know, man. Congrats. So we did one half and then they did the other. So that's cool. This was supposed to be a test project. And now it became an international um, student film festival, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, BIPOC, by the way, BIPOC. Yeah. So it's, it's incredible. And, and what's crazy is, like, uh, communities of like that are non-film are supporting us by reposting our stuff and everything. Yeah. We were able to get a boost by, you know, reaching out, and they'll be like, let me know what else you want and stuff like that. So the community came out and showed out, and we have this. Now, if we continue this, I'm pretty sure it's going to get bigger because of what's going on right now you see so right. this is this is an amazing event and i hope to continue this all right last question for you man so you can enjoy the rest of your night what would you say has been the most memorable part of this whole process putting this film festival together i guess ooh, you know what the keynote speaker's speech uh, uh yeah. effie so, brown so shout effie out to brown you says some really great things uh, according to her experience talking about like how she was going to be a director because she felt she had to be a director yeah. and then next thing you know she finds out through that experience that she had a self-realization about her becoming a producer she tried it out and she realized she's one bad uh, you can bleep that oh, a bad producer there we go. it's just inspiring you know it's like she's kind of she kind of went through the same stuff I went through uh, you know in life before I made my film club, before all this. And, and it's one of those things that you just gotta keep going. Bro, really? So you gotta keep going and, and do your best with what you have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If 
if something doesn't go your way, how can you get it to go either a, a similar way or the same way? The world doesn't stop. Right. right. So Keep that's kind of what she was ta- trying to say. Uh, it's like the world doesn't stop, and you know, you gotta fight for what you want in life in order to get it. Um, and if you just sit there, you're not gonna get anything. Right. Right. Hey man, thank you so much. Congratulations on such an amazing night, my man. Hey man, have a great night, man. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Cut it, cut it. <laughs> I'm here with Francisco and Michka, the winners of the best director of the BIPOC Film Festival. First of all, how does it feel like hearing your name? You know, best directors. It's really awesome. Like we've been, you know, really happy to kind of take this film to different festivals, and we feel like this is really the perfect audience for this. So to like win that award here is really special. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Like she said, we're really excited that the audience could really connect with it um, because we haven't had that opportunity in other festivals. Wow. Yeah, Gold, Golden Cage, my favorite film. Don't tell anyone else. I'm not playing favorites here, but you guys are my favorite. I resonated with me so heavily. I just wanted to ask, like, what was the process of coming up with that story? You know, uh, I'm sure personal stories as well, but you know, your own family members, friends, like how did that come about? Yeah, well, I think it came about, we were both um, film students at UC Santa Barbara, and um, it was actually Francisco's idea, um, and he had kind of, you know, thought about making a film that ended with that kind of border at the beach where like it kind of goes out into the ocean, and we just thought that was a really interesting image, so we developed the story from there, and I don't know if you want to add something to that, but... Yeah, I mean, I just kind of pitched the idea to Michka, and naturally she's just like an amazing producer, so she immediately started to just look up what it would take to actually make it, and it just, the more and more we talked, the more it seemed possible. Great. Yeah, uh, just curious, like, what was the most difficult part of making that film? I would say that, like, so the end part where we shot at the border and, and that whole last scene, it took us, like, we actually filmed all of that a year and a half after the initial photography because we were trying to get permission to film at the border for a very long time on the U.S. side, and we eventually didn't get it. So we actually had to recreate part of the border wall to shoot some of their close-ups at the end and then actually shoot the drone shot on the Mexico side of the border at the very end. So that was definitely like the biggest challenge was figuring out, you know, having to like adjust from our initial plan of actually shooting it on both sides and figuring out like how to make it happen anyway, now that we'd already shot the whole rest of the film. Where did you end up recreating the, the U.S. side? Um, we, we, so we actually recreated part of the border wall and painted it exactly like the wow. thing and put it on a random beach in Rosarito in Mexico oh, and, wow. and shot all of their kind of like shot reverse shot there. And then only the last drone shot where it pulls out is actually at the border. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. I, I got two more questions for you. Uh, that was the toughest part. How about the most memorable part, the most rewarding part of this whole process? Wow, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, honestly, it was, I think, the most rewarding, most memorable part. I think we had, it was COVID, so we had such a small crew. It was a six person crew. Um, and it was just like, it feels like I watch it now and I feel like so much work went into it that I just can't believe we pulled it off with only six people and just when I look back at pictures and everything I'm just really really satisfied with, with what we got out of out of the commitment that everyone put in yeah, yeah how about yourself yeah I think the, honestly kind of taking our crew uh, who is mostly we went to UC Santa Barbara and like it was mostly like fellow students or post grads or other people we knew through that and like being able to kind of bring them to Mexico and actually shooting there when everyone kind of had nothing going on because of the pandemic and we just graduated into a pandemic so like I think that was really amazing was going to Mexico with everyone and like do something that kind of like out there during a time where it was kind of hard to do really anything. Yeah, incredible. Okay, one last question for you. Just, you know, through this whole process, making a film is never easy. I was wondering, you know, who would you say is kind of your pillar of support throughout this whole process? That's a good question. I mean, I feel like we've had a lot. We've we've been lucky to have like a lot of different people supporting us from like faculty at our university that kind of helped connect us with certain people that helped us along the way. But then also um, our other like lead producer, Gareth, um, he was like a huge, you know, part of, we, we met him very early on in the process and he was actually also an undocumented immigrant at one point. So he really resonated with the story and kind of helped us you know bring it to life so I think you know having having support from like all these different people I think was really um, helped us kind of like bring it across the finish line and realize that it was something worth investing our time into. How about yourself? Um, I think um, like Michka said like all the resources from the, our university were, were really a lot of um, they set the groundwork um, but overall like biggest pillar obviously 
Mitch as a producer because I feel like I, I would have not I, I wouldn't have we wouldn't have gotten this far without like a lot of decisions that she helped she helped uh, make. There you go. Well, congratulations again. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. I really like the highlight of, of my evening Thank was so being able to experience this film. Congratulations and have a great rest of your evening. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, everybody. I am here with Erica Mendoza, the director of the BIPOC Film Festival. Uh, how do you feel? Has it settled in a little bit? Are you relieved at all? Now that the festival's over? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, it's like, you know, any event that you plan, right? It's always the buildup and the anticipation of who, how many people are going to show up. Is everything going to be okay? Are people putting chairs away right now? Yes, they are. <laughs> and so... No worries, no worries. You know, so... Oh, in the uh, pro product right here. We're, this is guerrilla style. Guerrilla in it. Yeah. No, but um, ultimately, you know, yes, it, it has been one of those um, things where I'm just like so relieved. I had so much support of the community. You guys, the, you know, CSU Entertainment Alliance, the Hidden Gem, the Latino AX Film Club. All of us came together and just kind of pulled it through, right? And it, it's one of those things where, you know, we just had to keep getting used to, right? They could be a little unorganized in the beginning, but once we start getting the ball rolling, then things are going to start, you know, aligning. So it's our first year. We, I feel like we did great. I don't know. What do you think? I can only speak for myself, but I, I, I think it was great. So right now I'm just taking it all in, embracing all the folks that came out to support. And um, yeah, I'm just happy. Some amazing films that were submitted, uh, too. So, I mean, what was one way that this night may have exceeded your expectations and maybe one way that it matched exactly what you wanted? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so, we were anticipating 140 guests. The max capacity was about 200. And so, I looked back and I saw all of the seats taken. I'm like, wow. Okay, I don't know how many people are here. So, that's one of them. Two... Our, was our keynote speaker, Effie Brown. She came in and she delivered. I had no idea what she was about to give to the audience. All I know was that she handed it to people when she was on Project Greenlight and she went viral, you know, when she told off a couple people in that project. So, so I was really like anticipating her bringing in the heat, but you know, she just brought it back to the, the sole purpose of like, why are we doing this, right? And so just finding your purpose, making sure that you know what you're good at, and you know, it's okay if you're not good at this, you know, it's okay if you're not good at that, but as long as you continue to strive and fail, ultimately you understand what you're good at and what your purpose is, and you surround yourself with people that are gonna support that mission, the opportunities are like endless. So I, I really grasped that from her and I admire her so much. So I was happy that she was our keynote speaker and she got to deliver her message in front of all the students. Absolutely. Amazing, amazing speech. Uh, my next question for you is, looking back on this whole process, uh, you know, you mentioned it was a six-month process, but even longer than that, dates back even longer than that. Looking back at it, what were the three kind of, like, touchstone moments for you? Like, some moments that when you look back on it, you're like, man, those, those were, like, the building blocks of this whole thing. Oh, well, you know, just maybe having a little bit more money for, like, a marketing team, you know, just a few more more money for, like, certain departments, of course, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, looking back at it, I feel like, you know, it's hard to, in retrospect, to, to put myself in that situation until then, you know. But for now, what I can think of is how we can improve, right? Seeing forward in the future of the BIPOC Film Fest, I think it's just getting more people hyped up and seeing you know the work that we're doing and so that's going to cultivate a lot of relationships and people are going to feel motivated so next time when they see that we're going to do another festival they're going to want to submit it's going to create more noise and it's going to create more people to want to join and 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 support and uh, volunteer and not just that but you know it's going to create more traction for us to to deliver you know having the expertise of like marketing and social media i think that really benefited me because i know how to assess this but if I didn't know any of that, I would have been like, oh, God, guys, I don't know what to do. But because I did, I feel like it really helped me to just kind of like, OK, girl, you got to do it. Do you, if nobody else is going to do it, you got to do it. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a time crunch. It was really limited and we all have our lives. And so it was one of those things that you kind of like volunteer and just do it. So, you know, this is going to be something that's going to be moving forward. Um, we have to have more of like a team effort. We have to have more funding for people to um, 
get the, the roles that they deserve. I think for now being our first year, we did the best that we could with the resources that we had, and it was a team effort. So I'm just really happy about that. Absolutely. I mean, you have so much to be applauded for for this evening. I got one more question for you. You know, this evening being such a long process to get to this moment, who would you say was kind of your pillar of support, you know, through this whole process? Pillars of support. Oh, man. I mean, I got to say, you know, obviously Rafael Flores was my pillar. Daniel, Daniel Tinajero was definitely my support uh, person for this, too. He helped create all the digital videos, you know, for the page and everything that we needed to promote. And so, you know, although you guys are students and you guys are, you know, having to do your reports and your homework and everything else, you guys still took the time to still support, right? And, um, and that's when I tell him, sometimes, you know, it's not gonna be about how much people can pay you, it's like how much you can come out and just like prove yourself, right? And this was one of those opportunities that's like, okay, bro, nobody's really getting paid, but let's show in, let's put in the work and like, let's make this happen. And he was one of those persons that really held it down. Anytime that I needed something, he was right there. Hannah also, Hannah was really active with um, the Latino AX Film Club and they, you know, got the volunteers, they got the photographers, everybody was out here just pretty much shining. So those are my three people that I can honestly say were solid on my team. Amazing, there you go. All right, well, congratulations on this evening. It's, Lord knows how much effort this must have taken, but I think, you know, you asked how my perspective was, it was an incredible night. Oh, you know, thank you incredible so much. films and incredible people. Yeah, and so. I hope, you know, it inspired you guys. and you know, to create more work and go out there and do it. You know, if we don't support each other, then who else will? We got to make sure that we hold these uh, corporations and people accountable, right? Put your money where your mouth is so that way we can continue doing the work. Because if not, then, you know, we're just good. We're just going to be left in seeing our films through, you know, YouTube. Not that YouTube is bad, but come on, Dolby Experience. That was incredible. Yeah, that was a whole other. Everyone level, right? deserves. Everyone who's made a, an amazing film deserves to have their film shown exactly. on the big screen, no matter how little they have exactly. you know, to make that. So no, I, what you're doing is amazing. I'm super happy to be, you know, a small part of it, and I'm super happy to have talked to you. You know, someone who what you all granted. So thank you so much for your time. And, yeah, of I mean, have a great rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my thank God. You for Absolutely. Yeah. Bye, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. I am here with Xavier, the sound composer for uh, Trace. Man, first of all, I want to ask you, like, how do you feel about, you know, the night? Obviously, you guys had a big win tonight. Like, what's that like? It feels surreal and stuff. I like graduated San Jose State three months ago Congrats, and stuff. Man. Thank you. I, I'm like, how did we get here and stuff? I'm like, how did you? Did I take a wrong turn at Albuquerque? And so, you know, it, it, it feels great. You know, lots of great people out here. Um, you know, it's, it's far and few between where you meet like people like this that are like passionate about their stuff. So it feels great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess the question I want to ask is like, how how did you get here? Like working on, on a trace, like how did that project come up? Yeah. So I've always wanted to work on films, making music. And I've been to go to San Jose State making, you know, music, like majoring in music. And one day I asked my professor, I was like, hey, do you recommend anything? And he said, oh, you should contact like the film scoring department, or like the film department. And I contacted them. They're like, yeah, we actually have like this project. Like no one had, no one's doing the music for it. Would you like to do it? Got into contact with the director, Julia, and it was just from there. Just, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. And the trace, such a, unique film like yeah, yeah. how soon into the process were you let in i was probably like two months into the project like that's when they uh let me in that's when i contacted them and i was working on it. i was like yeah lots lots of people can relate to this and so you know like absent fathers and so i know many friends of mine that have absent fathers i'm like yeah and then um she told me she was like i want like light-hearted music but you know like deep felt i was like yeah i, I can deliver that you know, having gotten to the point where you're watching on the big screen, but now looking back on the journey, what was like some of the most memorable moments, or maybe like some of the hardest parts of that whole journey? Okay. Yeah, I would say um, it'd probably be like the end, because you know that's when you see like um, this was all part of like a, a BFA, Bachelor's of Fine Arts thing. 
where we ended up like watching on a theater screen at the school and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like difficult parts, you know, communication and stuff, but you know, the more you communicate, the clearer things become. Yeah. So that definitely helped out. Lots of meetings with the director, like, do you want the music like this? Do you want the music like that? Yeah. You know, coming from a music perspective, I'm like, oh, I know what that is. But someone that doesn't is they're like, that tingly thing and so you know like that, mm -hmm. that sparkly thing I'm like I'm gonna just play the music and then tell me when it happens and I'll <laughs> fix it. I always, there's always a joke right of like the first cut is always like hell because yeah. you're like there's no music the cuts are rough all that stuff but yeah I can imagine like seeing the final cut seeing it presented in somewhat in a perfect fashion or oh, yeah. as close as you can get it is like it re is super rewarding. Now I was wondering if you could speak a little bit on like the importance of having the BIPOC Film Festival and having, you know, a resource for communities to build in, in, in this kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, people of color in the industry, there's really not that many and stuff. And I know, like, growing up, I really didn't see that many people that look like me on the screen and stuff. So, like, seeing more people do that, I'm like, it's just empowering. It just makes you want to do it more. Like, oh, I didn't know that was a route and stuff. Like, before like all this and stuff, like music, making music. I didn't, I didn't know you could do that and stuff, or like for video games. I, I just thought it was like, oh, either you work in a factory or like work in an office, but then this just really opens up a whole new path. Right. Yeah. I mean, sorry, just to follow up, I know I said that was my last question, but like, how supported did you feel pursuing this passion? Because you said, w w was it more of like a self-motivation thing or were you able to have build that like support group around yourself? I was able to build that support group. I was lucky enough to come from a family of musicians and like creative people. So they had, they like all, all the time, they're like, you should do it. And so like, just, just go for it. And I'm like, it's, it helps a lot. It's great to have that. I know people out there that don't have that and just do it by themselves. And I'm like, man, those, those people really tough and so driving their way. Yeah, but I mean, you can have the right community, but also you can, but you still have to execute. And I oh, think yeah, obviously you yeah. doing what you do, winning best experimental film, like I think that means that you, you're on the right path. So, hey, man, I just want to say congrats again. Thank you. Thank you again Thank for you. your time, bro. Oh. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think we're good to go. Perfect. Now, I know, I know it's that face you've been seeing all video and I apologize for that I just wanted to come back in and, and wrap things up with a nice little bow and thank the BIPOC Film Festival for hosting us and having such an incredible evening planned out for us you know celebrating all these different voices all these different filmmakers from all cultures from all backgrounds and also for allowing them the opportunity to meet talk collaborate hopefully in the future you know that that to me is how you keep film alive is you know you amplify new voices that have things to say and hopefully you get films that resonate with more and more people so no it's an absolutely beautiful thing that i'm happy and grateful through the csuea to you know help support and be a part of and also on that same note congratulations to all the filmmakers that not only won awards but also had their films selected to view i mean you had so many different films covering so many different topics you had one about like skate culture a uh, hilarious movie uh, titled Chai, not Chai Tea. That was about uh, cultural appropriation, which very much a, an interesting, fascinating topic. And also, you know, the, the film that won best film at the awards was uh, Bistro Number no. One and is by a, an SFSU alum. So, you know, go Gators. <laughs> um, with that being said, again, congratulations to everyone who was involved with the BIPOC Film Festival. I remember very fondly uh recording our very first interview my first interview with, with daniel and just seeing how many things were up in the air how many things were uncertain you know i, I remember saying to him people want to start a band uh, start a podcast but starting a film festival is a whole nother level of difficulty a whole nother lane and to see it be executed so gracefully and amazingly um i gotta applaud it so you know my a standing ovation for the BIPOC Film Festival again. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff that YouTubers say to do. This has been Chesco from the CSUBA, and we will see you later. Peace.